Welcome to Greater Grace Palm Beach. Wednesday night. Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We meet on Sundays at uh, the Homewood Suites 4700 Donald Ross Road, Palm Beach Gardens 33418 every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. All are welcome. And then also, I always like to uh, welcome people to uh, to my personal website, music website, jeffbrunty.com, all free music. I appreciate it if you uh, do listen to, to the music and share it with your friends, that you would send me a note on there. You can say, hey, I like it, and thank you, or whatever. Appreciate it. And... Uh, so tonight, oh, tonight we had a um, got a good message tonight. Always a good message from the Word, and appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we need the prayer for our church. We're looking for a, a new location. We're good for, till January where we are now, but we'd like to get a building, our own place, where we can meet and set up and have even possibly start uh, Bible college classes again. And, uh, but please keep us in prayer. Thank you. And tonight, uh, tonight's a beautiful night here in Florida, South Florida. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much tonight for this time. And we pray for the people in our church today. Uh, Leon has, uh, has some difficulties today. And uh, we pray that you heal him. My great grandson, he has some issues too. We just pray for him also. Uh, and for, uh, we also pray for uh, Alex, Alex's uh, twins, and Alex, Susie uh, Knudsen's daughter. We pray for them because they, they were in the hospital today. So we had a lot of people in the hospital today. And we pray for them. Pray for our church, Lord, and, and bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Wake up. Smell the rope. Oh, I'm sorry. This happens from time to time when you don't do a song for many years. Wake up. Smell the coffee. Hear the bird is singing. He's calling 
Can't you hear him? He's calling. Can't you hear him? Oh, children, wake up. Oh, children, wake up. Something like that. Wake up. As a, as a believer in um, Proverbs 3, verse 6, it says, Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He directs your path. So anytime you're thinking with God, he, he's, he's speaking to you in some way, in some manner. He's guiding you through this darkness. You know, sometimes a voice is, is audible and sometimes it's inaudible. But God calls us. He calls us by our name. He calls us by our name. He knows us. He knows every thought. Psalm uh, 139. He knows every, every thought that we have, every hair, every move. He knows our beginning and our end. And then sometimes, like I say, sometimes it's inaudible voice. His voice is just as real as what we hear over the airways, uh, you know, on the TV. Those voices are calling us too. They're saying, "Look over here. You got to have one of these. You got to have a beer. You got to have a cold ice. You got to have a coke. You got to have a. You got to have this. You know, radio, TV, Facebook, billboards, ads, sales of some sort. Something's on sale. You got to have a new guitar. You got to have another guitar. Billboards." Things, objects, you know, all the time that pizza's calling my name, if you think about it, food. God's voice is not just as real as these voices, but it's more real than any voice that's calling your name right now. Because his voice, the voice of God spoke us all into into existence. He spoke the universe into existence. But these other voices, they call your name too. They put doubt in your mind. Um, they say there's something better than, than hearing God's voice. See, sometimes it's a better job. Some people say there's a better job and you, you have to move and relocate and, uh, if you're called to a particular church, God has called you there. That's his voice to say, be here. Be here more. So uh, a better job might call you, but there's no church there that doesn't have a real vision from God. But if God calls you, if he calls you to go someplace, go. By all means, go. That, because that's where he's called you. We have the right, you know, we have right here, and now, an opportunity to live each day abiding in the still small voice of God in 1 Kings 19, 12. I am God, and he will be exalted, and he, to be, for us to be still and to know that he's always there. He's always God. God is always with us. Be still and wait on him in Isaiah 40 verse 31, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Sometimes it's not, a, a, we don't have to make a move right now. We just wait, we sit at the feet like Mary did. Uh, in Psalm 46, 10, God is there. He's always there. He's with us at all times. He's always speaking to us. He's guiding us. The trees cry out. The creation cries out. And that he is faithful, who has called us unto the fellowship of his dear son. It says, faithful is he who called, who will also do it. If God has called you to do something, he will be the one that does it. You call and say, well, what am I here? He goes, faithful is he called, he will do it. He will make a change. He will make a change and he'll conform you to his image. In 1 Corinthians 1, 9, it's faithful is he who called, who will also do it. He has a plan. And the plan that he will do, and he will do it. First Thessalonians 5, 24. 
What a privilege it is for uh, Jesus Christ to say, don't worry. Don't worry about what to say. You know, if you're soul winning or you're even talking to somebody, uh, you know, our footsteps are, are ordered, ordained. What makes us a good man is we believe God and, and uh, his, uh, we believe God and his imputed righteousness to us. He gives us his righteousness because we believe him. And we believe him. The more we believe him, the more we trust him. Uh, the more able he is to uh, speak through us because it's no longer us speaking, it's him. We don't have to memorize all kinds of, of scriptures. It's good to memorize and know the word of God, but uh, and that's not a requirement because he is the one that's doing the work in you and through you, and he's the one that will speak through you. He goes, I will give you my mouth and my wisdom. So don't worry about what to say, because if you're every every step that we take is ordered. He knows every step. He knows our first step, our last step, our first breath, our last breath. He knows us. He knows the situations we're going to be in. He's there. I acknowledge him. Okay, well, how am I going to get around this situation? He will give us the words. Every step's ordered, and every appointment that we have with anybody is a divine appointment. So wherever we are, if he's even in a, in a uh, if we get put in jail and we're in a, uh, a cell by ourselves, it's an appointed time. It's an appointment. It's a divine appointment. It's a time just to pray and to meditate on God and his word. And he will give us what to speak. And you will speak what I want you to speak. When you are a soul winner in Proverbs 3, 6, we acknowledge him. And he directs our path. He directs us what to say. Sometimes it's, Paul had to pray for a door of utterance. Pray for a door of utterance. And the, the door is, the utterance is in you, but the door has to be open. And God gives us discernment. Sometimes you're speaking to somebody and it's just hard soil. You're not going to, you, you can say a word, but if it, and that's the, that's the seed. You plant that seed, but if, if it bounces off, you can't do anything. He's the one that does it. He's the one that opens the door. He's the one that, that, that deals with the soil that you're, uh, and the person that's in front of you. He deals with them. Our, our part is to be obedient to him. Just obedience. That's better than sacrifice. I'm obedient. There's no results, Lord, in what I'm doing. None. But I'm here. And I'm available. That's God. That's how he works. Even a Christian martyr. In the hour when when uh, they take you to persecute you, you 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 know, uh, because they you know they don't like you and they don't like Jesus. It's about Jesus that they don't like. The world does not like Jesus in any. They don't like the cross. Even Christians don't like the cross. I get uh, uh, kind of uh, picked on a little bit because I preach the cross maybe too much. They say I don't know. I just preach what God says. It says that. Preaching the cross is foolishness to those that perish. Not to say they're going to lose their salvation, but they're not going to gain anything. Because they're, when, uh, when tragedy and stuff happens, they don't know how to deal with it. Because Paul says, I know how to be obeyed, I know how to abound, I know how to suffer need, I know how to be hungry, I know how to do these things. Because I've learned. Why? Because I was taught. And I, and I, was, uh, I was meek in being able to do that. So even the Christian martyrs like Stephen, Stephen said, hey... Lay not this sin to their charge. He could not forgive their sins, but he asked God to for, not to lay that particular sin because it was against him. So don't lay the sin that they do against me, which is there, it's against the cross. It's against, it's against the Lord Jesus. Like the last Sunday's message was enemies of the cross. People don't even know they're enemies of the cross, but they are because they cannot handle it. They said, well, why are you enemies? Don't speak on the cross. He says, well, take up your cross daily. When did that end? And to deny yourself, reckon yourself dead. Uh, it's a battle, and we have that battle. We, you know, It's sin that's in us. We're not sinners. We're sinners that are saved by grace. We're saints. We're saints. And, uh, but we still have that sin and that battle going on in, in uh, uh, Romans 7. I don't do what I should do do what I shouldn't do, old wretched man that I am. And uh, so we have that battle up until the very end, till the end of our course that God has 
sit for us. I'd finish my course, Paul says. You know, I fought the fight. It was a fight battle all the way, and I kept the faith. The faith is hearing the word of God, knowing what's going on, knowing that there's a war going on, and standing with the truth. Standing with the truth is sometimes not popular. And uh, people, they yoke up with sight and say, well, you're not doing well there, Jeff. Your church is small and, and it's lean. I said, yes, yeah, it's, it's small and lean, but we got some powerful saints, powerful saints I go to war with any time. So that's, that's what we got. We got those. You know what you have. You have powerful saints. Jesus knew the 12 that he had. He knew he had one that would betray him. But he knew who he had that were disciples and that would carry the cross. So, um, so as we realize the reality of a spiritual urgency and a battle, we make commitments to come to church. You know, some come, but many don't. Many don't. Matthew 22, 14. It says, many are called, but few are chosen. You see, they say, well, there's many called. Well, yeah, when God was doing some certain kind of miracles and stuff like that, there was crowd, there were multitudes that ended up, he ended up sending away and sending the, the disciples ahead. And John 6, 66, many followed him no more. So there's the many. They're, they're okay. The many are the whosoever wills are going to get to heaven. But, they, but they're, not, they're not the ones that God uses to uh, carry the cross and make a difference. But he doesn't need many. He doesn't need a lot. He doesn't need a lot of money. He doesn't need a lot of stuff. Because God is God. He doesn't need anything. It's a commitment to the commission with the Lord. He invites us to come. You ever notice that he's the great initiator? God is the great initiator. In Matthew 11, uh, 28, 29, and 30. Come all who are laden and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He's, he's calling people that, are, are, that can't do anything. They, they're carrying a load they can't carry. So that's who he calls. He doesn't call somebody that's already together. People say, well, I'm going to get together, and, I, and when I get my life together, I'll follow Jesus. Well, yeah, really. You're never going to do that. You're going to repair Adam, and it's just the same Adam with a crutch. So... Let Jesus take care of it. Come in and put your burden in, at his feet and he will carry you and a burden. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. Because he, he took care of the sins of the whole world. You know, like being invited to the wedding in Matthew 22. See, we meet with the Lord. He is committed to us and he is here every time that we he want you know, he wants us to make a, a commitment to him in Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of the brethren as a manner of some is. Some people will find a, a way not to be at church. You know, oh, well, we're going we're to take the kids up to the, there's a way to get out of coming to church and coming in and being part of it. No commitment. And people say, well, you know, it's legalistic. Well, they come. He goes, do it more as, as you see the, the time approach. I believe if we had a place, where people are welcome to come to Wednesday night here, but uh, they, you know, it's okay. I, I can I can understand that they watch online, but Sunday they come. And if we had our own building, then we would do our own Wednesday night and then do other studies. Besides that, but commitments. Sometimes people commit to fasting, and uh, some do, but many don't because some things can't be accomplished without fasting according to Mark 9.29, like casting out demons and stuff. But some, sometimes that's not a, a requirement either, fasting. Praying and fasting is, is powerful stuff, praying. You know, these are privileges, and, and by making these commitments, the Holy Spirit can change not only us, the people we love, Quietly and secretly, we can pray and fast for those we love. Not like a religious spirit. There's so many religious spirits out there, and, and that's, that's the one that Jesus did, had the most trouble with, was religious spirits. If he came and he, and he taught what, he was a teacher, but if he caught, taught what they wanted to hear, 
according to the rules, then he would be okay. You know, but faith is, is what pleases God in Hebrews 11, 6. And, and because when we hear and respond, you know, faith is a substance, Hebrews 11, 1, of things hoped for and evidence. It produces evidence in the lives of the believer. It's what it does. And it's uh, it, because there's a change that goes on in Romans 8. He's conforming us to the image of, of his son, Jesus. And the world hates Jesus. They hate the real Jesus, which is the word of God, Jesus. There's a lot of Jesuses out there. Didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do that? They know the Jesus of love. And that's the only one they know. And he is love. But they don't know the, the, uh, the Jesus of mercy. They don't know the Jesus of grace. They don't know the Jesus of, of, um, uh, of um, judgment. He's all these. He, if you know who he is, he puts his word above all his name in Psalm uh, 138, verse uh, 2b. It says, he magnifies his word above all his name. So he has a lot of names you can call him. Yeshua, Yahweh, his word, the word. In the beginning was the word, John 1, 1. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The whole word, the Alpha, the Omega. In the beginning, in the end, he is the word. He's the Alpha and Omega at the same time. He's eternal. Eternity doesn't have a time. It has, it has unlimited, it's unlimited in everything, in knowledge and wisdom and in strength and power. So it, that's what, it's beyond our comprehension. And we can try to, to uh, intellectually explain all these things, and that's what happens with a lot of uh, divisions in churches is you try to explain something that just s s says what it says. The Word says what it says. You can exegete it, go here, go there, but it says what it says, and it's to you. Uh, like a, one of my favorite verses I quote a lot lately is Psalm 119, um, 6. It says that the, uh, the law of the Lord is perfect. It's perfect right there. <coughs> the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So it converts your soul. It's, it's perfect and it's designed to make, to perfect us and to, and to conform us to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the... Uh, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. And the testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of the Lord is, is the life that we change. His, his testament, the Old Testament, New Testament, our testament, because we are declared to be living epistles, ex extensions of the word of God. The testimony of the Lord is sure, because his faithful is he who called, who will also do it. And Paul says, I'm confident in this very thing, that he who called you, there's the call again, Will, will, will do it. He will transform you. He will change you. Yeah, that's verse 7, not 8. The, the, uh, I mean, 6. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. It's going to happen. He will do it until the day of Jesus Christ. Making wise the simple. I like the wise the simple. Simple, because the meek is who he will teach. He's not going to say, well, the, if the intellectual is simple person, a very smart individual intellectually, he can teach them too, but they have to be meek. Not knowing anything as they ought to know it, thinking. They says, well, I got to know it from God. I got I to get it. I got to study the word of God, all of us. But he, whatever our level, our intellectual level is, God will speak to us personally and directly every time. He's not willing that any should perish. And he will use, he used simple, ignorant, unlearned men like uh, Peter and John. You see them and say, hey, you're the, the, that guy. Peter and John, you guys are simple. They probably wouldn't even be received in a lot of churches today. But uh, they, would, they could be in, in ours for sure. But it says, not forsaking the assembling. Do it more as you see the day approach. But today, it looks like it's approaching today. Could be today. I would love that. I would like to be preaching and say, okay, today, this could be the day that God takes us. I'm, I'm, I love that. So we do that. We make commitments. 
And it's the thing that's missing a, a lot of times in the church is commitments and, and uh, discipline. And if, when you start speaking about discipline in the word, then people don't want to hear about discipline. They don't want to be disciplined. Uh, no, I, I don't want to do anything. I don't have to do anything. You don't. It's true. You got the, you got the thirsty. You got the, uh, the whosoever wills. God is not willing to any perish, but he's got the disciples. He's got the ones that oh, I'm going to make a difference because I'm going to know the word of God. I'm going to have a word in season, out of season, and, and not sugarcoat it. Sugarcoat it. I want to, I'm going to tell you how it is. Hey, if, if, uh, if you don't have Christ today and you never accepted him and you've been invited and you died today, you would go to hell. And the hell's in a real place. And so is heaven. And heaven is right there, just one step from you. Just saying, yes, Jesus, I believe you. And trust him. And I don't know who's saved, who's not saved. I know that I am because I, I trust him. And I know a lot of people in our church are, most of them, 90% of them, 99.9. .9, everybody in our church is, even the backslitters. So these are privileges of, that we can make a commitment. And uh, the Holy Spirit can change not only us, but people that we love quietly and not religiously and, and faith is what pleases him faith faith is not conjured up faith is not conjured up faith comes by hearing the word of god it's not like i'm going to bear down and have faith no it comes by hearing the word and you're hearing the word and when you apply the doctrine that you hear then that pleases god so in other words oh you heard me god says oh you heard me yes i heard you god and he says, well, do this, you know, you know, or try this. You know, you may fail, you know, seven times 70, but God is still, uh, he's still there. He knows, he knows that, oh yeah, you're weak, you know, but he's going to, he's going to strengthen you. His, he is your strength. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. You know, we have the privilege to walk in wisdom, Colossians 4, 5, towards them that are without and redeeming the time. You think about that, uh, redeeming the time. You know, it's like you think about the times that you had an opportunity to share the gospel. And then when, and, but the more you realize God and, and the more you walk with him, the more you believe him, and the more you trust him, and the more you know who he is, and the more you know who he is, the more that you know who you are as an ambassador, a, a, you know, kings and priests and, you know, what we are. You know what you are. You know the authority that you have on this earth. You know that greater is he that's in you than he's in the world. You know that you, uh, you're more than a victory. You're more than a conqueror. I mean, in wherever you are, the victory is yours wherever you go. Whatever you do, you can fear nobody, no man, just God. You trust him. And the fear of God is, is a, uh, uh, the reverence of his, not, not the uh, tormenting fear that somebody that doesn't know God would have but the fear and respect of God and his word. You respect his word, and that pleases him. That's what pleases God, is you respect his word and his authority, and you can act in that because he gives you that. He anoints you. He anoints your steps, every one. So we have that kind of a privilege and walk in love toward, the, you know, as dear children. That's what we do in Ephesians 5, 2. In, in Colossians 4, uh, 4 or 5, redeeming the time. So we can take back the time that we lost with people and, and the opportunities that we have because we know better this time. We are privileged to hear God's voice and meet with him. You know, the entrance of God's word brings light in Psalm 119, 130 and gives understanding to the simple. There it is, the simple again. We don't have to have, uh, you know, we don't have to be intellectually have some kind of degree or, or any or a doctorate or, or a professor or anything. God, he, he deals with us right where we are in simplicity. The word is simple. The word is, if he made it complicated, that book complicated his word, nobody would understand it. Because the wisdom of, of, of the world is foolishness to God. Let's take what, actually the further 
uh, the more intellectual they get in the natural in the world, the further away they get from God. I mean, where did this uh, uh, Darwin's theory come from, that we came from an ape 50,000 million years ago? Uh, no, but the Word says that the Earth is 6,000 years old so far and growing. 6,347 days in 2 hours and 15 minutes, 37 seconds. Now, we don't know exactly, but we know in, that, in the ballpark that all of uh, creation and time uh, is, is documented. His story. The real story is his story. That's the real history. But in our schools, we have this moron stuff. You know, what, uh, you know, at different times they know how many stars there are. So no, God, only God knows every name of every star. He named them all. And he even knows even every hair that's on everybody's head. So uh, I'm going to trust that guy and, and learn as I go. And like Psalm 119, 105, the entrance of light. But, in, but then when, when he speaks, it, the light is like the, it's the discernment and the, and the knowledge. That's the light. Like in you walking around in a room and the lights are out, you're going to trip over everything in the room. But when the light is on, you can see everything and you have total discernment. I'm going to go right here. Going, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to go to the kitchen. There's something in the refrigerator calling my name. So uh, uh, so when he speaks, it's light. You know, so my, my steps, you know, and it lights my way. You know, the light, his light lights my way and lights my path and lights my feet. It lets me know who I am and what I'm supposed to do with my feet. I'm a soul winner. It says the one that wins souls is wise, and and and, the, and your feet, the the ones that brings the new the good news is the elevated, the feet is elevated on the highest mountains. That's how God sees that. He will light your path, and from stumbling, in this world, you'll have discernment. You know you know when you stumble. So, God does that. See, we have a royal priesthood. We're a chosen generation. God chose us. He called us out of darkness into his glorious light with his voice, 1 Peter 2, 9. He does it. His voice, his voice can speak through one of his disciples or one of his uh, uh, epistles, like we're epistles. Second uh, uh, Corinthians 3, 2 and 3 says we are declared to be who declares that? The Word, God's voice, declares that we're living epistles, known and read by all men. People see the change that happens in our life because we're not the same. We're born again. We're a new creation. You know, there's different kinds of spirits in the world. There's the religious spirits, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, and there's others. Uh, it, they, they come into the churches, and uh, they sneak in, and they're they're pretty cool. They know how to you know, win some people over. But uh, blood-bought believers who are disciples, who learn the whole counsel of God, and uh, they will try to undermine the pastor or whatever, or they'll speak, uh, you know, kind of, kind, you know, to undermine them. You know, like, oh, well, and then they'll try to undermine, but a good uh, believer is not going to go with that. You know, a good, uh, born-again, spirit-filled believer who's taught well. It's not going to believe that. It's cockatrice eggs. And the person is a religious spirit. It's a religious spirit. And, and Satan, he knows the word. He goes, uh, did God say? Did God say that if you ate that, did he? He's going to question you. Well, you know, I'll start questioning. Yeah, I'm going to start questioning God. I'm going to start questioning God's order. You know, it's a it's a dangerous thing, really, to attack a ministry. Uh, if if they're not if you're if you are not satisfied with a particular ministry, just leave it and go find your own and start your own or whatever. But don't attack God's people. Uh, it's just not right. You know, just love them, and you know if they leave, then they leave, and then if they come back, they're welcome. And it's the same way with uh, our church. We do that same thing. And it's because people are going to make mistakes. It's like uh, David. David was being attacked by Saul. You know, he knew God's order. He had a heart after God. He knew that it was wrong to go against God's anointed. And so he, even when he had a chance to kill, you imagine that? 
we wouldn't be reading about David if he would have done that. But it showed that he was he had a weakness too because he didn't like the fact that, that somebody's trying to kill him. And at the end of the day, he goes, uh, Saul and Jonathan, they were beautiful in their lives and their deaths. So that's the kind of, we know no man after the flesh. God wants us to see that. But a lot of people get in the flesh in a spirit, in a uh, religious spirit, a religious spirit. Like, I'm going to correct you. I'm going to correct what you're teaching is not right. You know, I, I've had that happen to me many times. I pray that my my teaching is right. I really do. I pray, God, please let me be right. And sometimes the messages seem to be hard, uh, but they're the truth. They're the Word of God. Read it. Read your Bible, I tell people. Read your Bible. It says, it's like that. It's like uh, sometimes, like even the uh, John, John and James, when he went to the, the village in Samaria, and, and, he, and Jesus, and they were rejected. They were totally rejected. Let's bring down fire. And consume them like like he, Elijah did it. So yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, that's kind of how I feel sometimes. You know, when you get attacked, let's bring down fire on them. You know, but God says no. You know, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So there there could be a, a time when Jesus came to seek and save the lost, and they can see sometimes that uh, you know turning the other cheek will work out for you. So. Uh, So what manner or sort are you? That's what Jesus said to them. What manner? I come to save lives, not to destroy. So, so we make faith adjustments. adjustments, and, uh, and we bring the gift of life, eternal life, and the way, and the way to get, you know, the, the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. And so we're safe and we're untouchable. They can kill the body, but they cannot kill us soul body and soul we're saved eternally we're we're secure we're eternally secure forever the spirit of the scribes and the pharisees they were good people but the attitude of self-exaltation and the attitude of, of doing doing it their way you know self-righteousness or relative righteousness uh th that works you know they think well you're going to wound somebody you know if if, if you teach you know, denying yourself, taking up your cross, wrecking yourself dead, and people actually take that in and say, yes, I am dead. What am I hearing here? So if I'm dead, the neck, even uh, this pastor, whatever he's preaching, is not going to hurt me. Let me check out what he says. It's not going to hurt me because I'm dead. It's just going to say, okay, I, I, I don't know what the, what's going on, but I know that, that, uh, that God is in it. And, uh, and I have to preach what God would have me to preach. And I, like I say, I pray that I'm on. I'm not out to wound people. I know I, I've brought people to church up in the Baltimore Linux even. And in Baltimore, uh, you know, Pastor Stevens, we get pretty rough sometimes. And he would call people out. Not, you know, sometimes not their name, but their sin that they're doing and where they actually are from and say, won't you go back there? And I said, that probably hurt their feelings. But they're not dead, and they got it. And their agenda in the church is different too. So if you come into a church, you want to be one that holds up the pastor's hands and helps him, you know. And if you want to see things change, and you can do something, do it. Do something that's good for the church that will help the pastor and the church. Not be divisive, and not show up. If you don't show up, if you don't show up to church, and you're gonna, you've got a better idea. Now, how's that going to work? It's not going to work. People aren't going to follow somebody that's, that's there half the time and, and half the time not, or always have an excuse for not being there. So it's uh, um, it's a religious spirit. It's that's once Jesus had the most trouble with the religious spirit. I have a trouble with religious spirits too, and I don't want to be one. I want to just be the, a, a man of God, learning to love people. That's what I need to do: is learn to love people. So we don't want to esteem others better than better than ourselves, or you know, or us better than them. In Philippians two three, you know, we're all on the same level. It's got a rainstorm going on outside, people. Uh,
Let's see what happens is some of these things. That the church is being under attack lately a lot. And so I, I have that stuff on my mind. But God is speaking to us. There's always these voices that there's a battle going on. There's always a war. We need to gird about our loins with strength, with the truth. Lord, with truth all the time. The truth uh, protects our emotions from being dragged under and guiding us. We don't want our emotions to guide us. We want the word of God, the truth of God to guide us. You know, some of these people, they come in, they secretly, they execute and exercise their personal dominion through a, a spirit of self-righteousness. They're good. They're, uh, uh, there's no way. I, I went to a funeral the other day, uh, a few weeks ago, and, and it was how righteous the guy was. I said, I can never be that righteous. You know, and, and, and from what I understand, the guy wasn't a believer. And... Uh, unless he got saved at the last minute. And that's, that's good. I'd love to see that happen. But his righteousness were, was that he all did and that I could never achieve myself as a Christian was uh, filthy rags to God. See, but the spirit of Jesus Christ is a spirit of meekness and gentleness in 2 Corinthians 10, 1. It's meekness and gentleness. Now, he can be harsh now, but he's meekness and gentleness. He can turn over tables, and he can whip people with the whip, too. He knows how to do that. He is the spirit of being lowly in heart and the spirit of patience in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29. He goes, come and learn of me. I am, I am meek and lowly in spirit and heart. He is that. He's very approachable. He's very approachable. Because of this, the word of God is made clear that this power he has given us isn't a force to be reckoned with. You know, it's different. The word of God is always sent forth to seek and to save that which is lost. You know, being a soul winner is, is, is a high, really the highest calling there is. It's like, you, there you are. You're, you're, uh, you're able to be the, the doorkeeper and say, look, hey, come through this door here. This is Jesus Christ. Revealing the hearts of uh, men as the sound of his voice goes forth. See, we are his voice today. In 1 John 4, 17, it says that we can have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this present world. We are him. We represent him. We are the ambassadors. We speak for the Lord. In 1 Kings uh, 19, verse 8, it says, And he arose and did eat and drink. And he went in the strength. We're talking about Elijah. Of that meat, 40 days and 40 nights, unto Hareb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What dost thou hear, Elijah? See, the word of the Lord, he's guided. He guided his steps there. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain the prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand up on the mountain. Sometimes you feel like, like you're totally abandoned. And that's why I say you don't yoke up with sight. Elijah's there. He's crying out to the Lord. He's acknowledging the Lord. And the Lord speaks to him. And, uh, and you, you'll be abandoned. You'll be, you'll be attacked by people that you, that you think are your best friends that you're going to, uh, that's going to have your back. But when they got a knife in it, and, and they, it's like, not good. So there he is. And there was other prophets he didn't know about. We, there's other people. God has other people. But sometimes we just don't see them. You know, there was five, there was five, uh, um, there were a hundred and a hundred in a couple of different caves hidden now. They had to hide. There's going to be a time, maybe even in this country, if the, if the, uh, the, the people win or steal or whatever they do with the election this next time, 
they could be coming after me and other people that preach these things. They could hold the stuff that we preach and, and put on the line against us in court because they'll call it false information and they'll call it uh, hate speech. Okay, so there that is. So, uh, but that's what it was with Elijah. And, uh, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. See, stand, let's stand on the mount. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks. Imagine that, the wind that breaks rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. You know, this voice was sweet, still, meek, lowly, in heart, and in mind. You know, where you find rest for your souls. That's what God has this still, small voice. However he speaks to you. It can be a loud voice sometimes, but it's, he used that. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and he went out and he stood in the entry of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost thou hear? You know, it, then comes the instructions. When God gets our attention, then comes the instructions. And I think uh, uh, if you read, that's in 2 Kings, but in, and if you read in Isaiah, Isaiah was an amazing man of God. What We have all the information from Isaiah. We have all the information from Elijah that we need to go forth. And God will speak to us. He will guide us. He will speak through us to these people. And uh, in Isaiah 6, and you know the story where where he was, I'll just take it from, um, we'll take it from Isaiah 6, verse 5. And it kind of uh, uh, comes to us that this is who we are. We're not qualified. We're simple. We don't really know a whole lot, but we know God. And we're learners. We're uh, learners. We're disciples. We're people that are learning all the time. We're learning how to be a base sometimes. We're learning how to abound. We're learning how to suffer need. We know this. We, the joy of the Lord is, is our strength. We know that we can go to him and he will explain it to us when he gets our attention. He has to break us first. You know, because a, a broken heart, uh, you know, that he will not despise. Broken, contrite is crushed. He will not despise us. He loves us. In verse 5, he says, Then said, I, woe is me, for I am undone. So this guy has nothing going on because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So God gets Isaiah's attention. Isn't that amazing? Look at me. I am nobody. I have nothing. I'm, un I'm just like nothing. I am weak. I'm like Paul was when he said, you know, uh, with the thorn in the flesh and his strength, he's, he's made perfect in his weakness because he was totally weak. And he says, and then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from off the, the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sins purged. And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? He's got his attention now. He cleaned him, purged him. He, he, he took, he, God did it. God did it. Isaiah didn't get it. He was undone. He was unclean. But God says, I do it. I'm going to clean you, clean you up. I'm going to change you. I'm going to transform you. I am the word of God. I am the law of the Lord, which is perfect. Isaiah, uh, Psalm 19, verse 7. I'm going to convert your soul. 
because whom shall I send? Who will go for us? There's the Trinity, us. Then said I, here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. If you read on in that chapter, you'll see that, that uh, when, he, when he made that, here am I, send me, and the God sent him, and then he says, I will go, and the people will not understand you. Doesn't that kind of like us sometimes? I think about some of these uh, neighborhoods. In South Florida, it's a, it's a, a, a tough, it's, it's a tough place. I think that, I don't know, God might have sent us to the toughest place to, to get people. I mean, it, uh, the churches here, there's some great, big, huge churches, and I, but I don't know too much. I'm, the one closest to me is like, I wouldn't go there if it was the only church on the planet. But that's okay. You know, there's people, believers in those churches too. But, the, but they don't teach the whole council and they and, and their doctrine, some of their doctrine is totally not even true. And, uh, but, it, but as far as uh, prospering by sight, they're doing that. But at the same time, I pray for them and we got some people that, that came from there and, and we don't underwrite them or anything like that. But they, they do stuff like uh, married, uh, you know, married same-sex people. You know, like, come on now. That's like Sodom and Gomorrah stuff. But it's a church, supposedly. So anyway, we, uh, you know, we seems like we're sometimes like we're the only ones out there teaching you. But we're not above anybody. We're not below. But we have a word when we have. And we go, and just like in Isaiah, it says, you're going to go, and they're not going to believe you. So we went through the whole place where we used to live in, in Lake Worth. And we, I think we went for every door in that. We did a parade, we did everything, and there's no, people don't come. They said, well, yeah, we're coming. And the thing happens is like when you when they say they come, they don't come. I said, if everybody that, that I personally talked to in my life and invited to church came to church, you couldn't get, you'd have, you'd fill every stadium, football stadium in the country. But they don't come, they lie. And then when you have one comes and say they're coming and they come, it's like, whoa, joy to the Lord. And you hope they stick. But see, the thing that causes them to stick really is the, the Lord's voice. His voice. And, and he, his voice is through us. Yeah, we might not see the results of it, but it's through us, through you. you. You, the undone person with unclean lips. He uses you to speak for him. Isn't that amazing? He does that. He uses you and me to speak, but we got to do it. And the thing of it is, the results is not us. It's not us. Some people would rather go to it. They go to the church because of what they have programs. Well, I've got this program. We got that program. We don't have a program. We have the Word of God. Period. And that's all we got. And if we get enough people and and we grow enough to have a program, then maybe we will. But it's going to still be the Word of God first and foremost in our church. And and I hope we can stick with that and. And uh, we just pray for that. We pray now, and we thank you, God, for your voice. We pray right now. We thank you for your voice speaking to us. Many are called, few are chosen. And that's, that's uh, something there. Many are called. The call goes out. The call goes out. But the chosen ones, is the one that God chose, and he predestined before the, because he knew they would respond. The chosen, he knew they would respond. And if you're one to respond today for the Lord, it's it's a it's a different, it's a, it's a different thing. It's a different life. It's a better life. It's the best life. It's the promised life. It's an eternal life. And you can say, God, I want that life. And that only thing keep us from that life is sin. But Jesus said, Well, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, there's a gift. It's eternal life. And He says to come and bring that that burden to me I'll take it because he went to the cross with the, all that burden he went to the cross the wages of sin and died for the sins of the world yours mine everybody's so the door was wide open and all he says is just take that step of faith and say yeah I believe God I believe that you love me that much that you would take my place on the cross so that I can go to heaven and be with you I want to do that Lord today and if you said that prayer and you're listening right now, you say, God, I want that gift. I hear your voice today through this unclean-lipped, uh, uh, unraveled person. 
that you would speak through him to me, this simple person that says, come. And it's you saying it, Lord. It's you saying, come. And I'm coming. And if you said that prayer today and say, God, I believe you. I'm here. I'm here for you, Lord. I hear you. And if you heard the Lord today and you respond to him by saying yes, just send us a note and say yes. Yes, I accepted Jesus today. Appreciate that. And we pray now and uh, for this week and this message in Jesus' name. Amen.